Here, I had them in my hand. Those things happen to me often. At home, church, my office. I say, man, I just had them in my hand. <laughs> I don't know if that ever happens to you, but we're going to get started here in a moment. And uh, we're going to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 13. We're going to start the message here in a moment. That, uh, this is the sixth of uh, seven lessons on Meet the Holy Spirit. And I had a handout for you to fill out tonight. And um, if we can't find them, maybe Rebecca can run them again or something. And we'll get them into your hands. But... Uh, I'm going to just start uh, but I'd like us to take our Bibles. I, I had them in my hands just a few minutes ago back and uh, I do not know where I set them down but oh no nope, that's not it. I'm getting old. <laughs> No, that's the other stuff. All right. No, they're not in the back, so. We'll start without them, and hopefully they'll pass them out while I, I'm going on here. But uh, let's take our Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians 13, 14. 2 Corinthians 13, 14 is the uh, verse that has been the theme for these lessons on Meet the Holy Spirit. Tonight is the sixth lesson. Meet the Holy Spirit, and I guess if there's a subtitle to this, I want to talk about three pursuits, three pursuits of the believer in Jesus Christ regarding the Holy Ghost. This is the verse that changed my life, uh, probably more so than any, uh, since I was saved. It, it sounds like it's just a almost a, a benediction that you throw on the end of a letter, uh, you know, that you just fill in space. Did you ever write a letter and just write something at the end? And, uh, well, it, this is important, though. It's not just a, a benediction. It says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Um, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we experience that at salvation and the love of God. I'm sure everybody has experienced the love of God. But then when you get to the third statement in the verse, the communion of the Holy Ghost, that's like a mysterious statement that uh, uh, a few people maybe understand what it means, but what's the last few words of the verse say? Be with you all. Be with you all. Now, the word communion is the most intimate word in the scriptures for fellowship. So not only are you having communion with the Holy Ghost, but is it very intimate fellowship? And most believers would say, I've never, say no, I've never heard of such a thing. And so that's what these lessons have been about and uh, we've talked about a lot of this in the, the first five lessons. But tonight, lesson number six, about meeting the Holy Spirit, having communion of the Holy Ghost. I want to show you what should be the pursuit and prayer of every believer uh, regarding the Holy Spirit. And first of all, I'd like you to turn to Ephesians chapter number five and verse 18. I want to talk about three pursuits that every believer should have in regard to the Holy Ghost. In Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse 18, the Bible says this, And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The number one pursuit every believer should have is to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, as we have seen in previous lessons, the Holy Spirit is a person. Uh, we've made that very, very clear. But, there are other verses in the Bible where God portrays our relationship to the Holy Spirit as a commodity. As a commodity. Uh, there's a verse, for instance, that talks about you and I 
being filled with all the fullness of God. You ever think of that? It's like a commodity. It's like some people have more God than others. More, some people have more of the Holy Spirit than others. It's a commodity. It says they gave Jesus, he received the Holy Spirit without measure. Without measure. In other words, Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost. Talks about a few other individuals in the scriptures who were full of the Holy Ghost, which would seem to indicate that some others are not. This verse seems to indicate that some are not filled with the Holy Spirit. That's why the verse says, Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So it's possible to be a believer and not be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1 uh, says, If there be any uh, consolation in Christ, if there be any comfort of love, if there be any fellowship of the Spirit... And it talks about uh, the fellowship of the Spirit, the, the communion of the Holy Ghost, and then also as a commodity to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Um, are you filled with the Holy Spirit of God? You get more of Him when He gets more of you. As you and I die to self and get self out of our lives and get sin out of our lives, we get more of the Holy Spirit in us. So you have to think about the Holy Spirit as a person. We've learned that in the previous lessons. As God, we've learned that in, in previous lessons, but also he is presented to us as a commodity. A commodity, something that some people have more of than others. This is why Jesus said one time these words in Luke 11 and verse 13. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father in heaven give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? And uh, again, that, that's just something we have to accept because God teaches that to us in, in the Word. Uh, I, I've, I've heard people say, when, when you get saved at the indwelling, you get as much of the Holy Ghost as you're ever going to get because he's a, he's a person. I, I understand that doctrine. I, I, I understand there is one indwelling. But there's also many fillings. Many fillings. Samson was filled with the Holy Spirit Four different times. Check that out in the story of his life in the book of Judges. Now, it didn't, didn't end well for him, but during those times, he was filled with the Holy Spirit four different times. And I understand, I, I don't know that much about the English language, but this, I guess, means be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Spirit. Be ye constantly filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I've tried to illustrate it like a gas tank. You install a gas tank on your car once, but you fill it over and over and over and over and over and over again to keep your car functioning. And it's the same thing with you and I as believers in Christ. We are indwelled with the Holy Spirit once. That's the moment you receive Christ as your Savior. But you and I can be filled with the Spirit over and over and over again. And like a car where you continually fill the gas tank, you can go a long ways. But boy, you let your gas tank run out and you're not going any farther. And the same is true spiritually. Have you pursued the filling of the Holy Spirit of God? In the olden days, they used to Instruct the body of Christ to pray for power, pray for power, pray for power, pray for power, pray every day for power. One guy used to say, put that on postcards and put it on the mirror before you shave and put it on the dashboard of your car and put it above the kitchen sink and 
Put it above your bed on the ceiling. Pray for power. And what he was saying that was we ought to always constantly be pursuing the filling of the Holy Spirit of God. Then number two, a second pursuit regarding the Holy Ghost is we need to pursue the fruit of the Spirit. Number one, the filling of the Spirit. Number two, the fruit of the Spirit. And most of that is listed in Galatians chapter number five and verses 22 and 23. Now, it's not nine different fruits. It's one fruit that bears nine different characteristics in the life of a believer in Jesus Christ. We need to pursue the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It's like a constant checklist. I would encourage you to memorize these nine words as a constant checklist to see how you are doing personally in your maturing, in your walk with the Holy Ghost. It says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Memorize those nine words and constantly check out to see how you're doing. We should be conforming more and more and more to the characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. The more and more we are filled with the Spirit and are growing in the Spirit. Now, this is an old illustration, but uh, some of you maybe have never heard it. I grew up on a farm. When we planted an apple tree, we did not expect to see any fruit on that tree for about eight years. In about eight years, we would see our first apple, and we'd all be very happy about that. But the next year, there were more apples on it. And the next year, more apples, and the next year, more apples, and the next year, more apples. As the tree matured, there was more fruit. And then an amazing thing happened. It would have so many apples on it that the boughs, the branches, would literally bend almost and touch the earth because there was so much fruit on it. And I think there's a little type there, maybe of humility. I won't get into that, but. I think the more fruit a person has, the more they bow. And the more they bow to the Lord, the more they bow down before him, the humbler a person gets, the more fruit they bear. But we did not go out after one year and say, uh, boy, this tree uh, is just uh, is worthless. Let's, uh, let, let's get rid of it. Let's give up on that thing. No, we, we had to be patient with it. We had to be patient with it. Now, I would encourage you, to be patient with those in the body of Christ, be patient with those uh, who are just getting saved, uh, that you don't try to hit them with a bunch of standards and a, a bunch of convictions and stuff like uh, two weeks after they get saved. Um, do you remember how long it took for you to mature after your salvation? It took me 11 years just to get the assurance of my salvation. 11 years after having it explained and explained and explained and explained to me that when you're saved, you're saved forever. God does a pretty good job about it. That job is complete. That job is, as it says in Hebrews 10, verses 10 through 14, perfect. And it took me 11 years just to get the assurance of my salvation. So we have to be patient with those that are coming up behind us. And, uh, you know, and sometimes let us not misunderstand patience for compromise. Uh, we don't want to compromise, but we want to be patient. You know, with the, the guy in the church or the lady in the church that just got saved and then they disappear for two months and you wonder what happened. Well, they probably didn't get saved, really. Well, no, I disappeared for almost four years. Uh, one time in my walk with the Lord, and uh, especially in my army days, I didn't darken the door of a church, didn't read my Bible, didn't pray, didn't commune with God at all. And, uh, but uh, I'm glad God's the judge. The Lord knows them, they're His. And I uh, praise the Lord for that. But you and I, as we surrender our lives to the Lord and we want to be filled, we pursue and say, God, fill me with the Spirit. And we work at 
crucifying self and emptying ourselves of sin through the sanctifying work of the Holy Ghost, the sanctifying work of the truth of the Word of God, as that begins to make us more holy and we're filled with the Spirit, and we pray that prayer Jesus taught us to pray, that God would give us more of the Holy Ghost of God, then the fruit of the Spirit, we want to constantly be examining ourselves about these nine characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit, have a working definition of each word, and constantly be evaluating yourself. Am I growing? These nine words, I believe personally, are the, 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 the briefest, yet probably most complete description of Jesus Christ. I, I don't think you could describe him in nine better words than these. If you want to know what was Jesus Christ like, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. That's probably the, the, the greatest description of Christ in nine words. And it's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of you and me trying harder. There's a big mistake I've made. Oh, I just got to try harder. Boy, did I fail this week. I better try harder next week. No, I better get out of the way. And, and die to self, crucify self, and allow the Holy Spirit of God uh, to fill me and give me His power. And then as He works in us, these characteristics, attributes, whatever you want to call it, I believe there's a pattern to the, the way they're paired up here in, 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 in trios. Love, joy, peace. Those keep us close to God. Those are... Those especially help us in our relationship with God. Long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness helps us get along with our fellow man. It helps us in our relationship with others. And boy, do we need that. Man, it's tough nowadays. But we need to be long-suffering with people. We need to be gentle with people. We need to be good with people. And, and I think God shows his goodness to us constantly in being merciful to us when we don't deserve mercy. But God is good and he gives us mercy anyway. And then the last three, faith, meekness, and temperance, have to do with our relationship with ourselves. Our relationship with ourselves. And the Holy Spirit here uh, bears these, this, this fruit in us, these, this, these characteristics, to help us control ourselves. Having faith in God and believing him and having meekness, and that is that inner strength where we just depend on the Lord to fight our battles and take care of the circumstances that we're in, and temperance, which is self-control. <clears throat> have you ever seen a person who didn't have temperance? It's pretty sad to see people addicted to drugs and alcohol and pornography and gambling and all kinds of things, and that stuff exists in the body of Christ today because people don't know the Holy Ghost. They don't know the Holy Ghost who can give them temperance and self-control over those temptations, those addictions. And uh, trying harder, nah, that's not the best advice we can give people. Uh, we need to introduce them to the person of the Holy Spirit and to the commodity of the Holy Spirit and encourage them to be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit, and then the temperance will come. And the meekness and the faith and all those other character flaws that we have in us will begin to be replaced with this perfection of God. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is not the fruit of you or me. This is the fruit of the Holy Spirit when we get out of the way and we let Him work. Now, last of all, tonight, number three, a third pursuit we need to have is the flowing of the Holy Spirit. The flowing of the Holy Spirit. Now, I have the verses, I believe, printed out on your sheet. Or if you want to turn to John chapter 7, you can and see it <clears throat> right from your Bible. A third pursuit is the flowing of the Holy Spirit. In John 7, verse 37, it says, In that last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, 
If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But notice the next verse for the explanation. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now I want you to notice this here. <clears throat> it says, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now you have to always compare Scripture to figure out what Scripture is saying. The Bible is the, the best interpreter of itself. What are rivers of living water? When you compare other verses like John 4 and verse 10, and Revelation 7 and verse 17, rivers of living water is the gospel. It's Jesus Christ. It's when we preach Christ. When Christ comes forth out of us. Now notice the first two have to do with helping us. So it can set up the third one tonight, which has to do with us helping others. The first two are like an inlet, being filled with the Spirit. Manifesting inside of us the fruit of the Spirit, for the, but the purpose is so that that can then flow out of us and help other people. What happens to a body of water that only takes in? What happens to a body of water that only takes in? It, 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 get, it stagnates. All right? It dies. The best example of that is the Dead Sea. Some of you will be going to Israel in February. They will take you to the Dead Sea. It is the lowest place on earth. It takes in water from the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River all the time, but never gives out. And they don't call it the Dead Sea for nothing. It's dead. There's not a microbe living in it. There's no seaweed living in it. There's no fish. There's no bottom feeders. There's nothing in it. It is dead. It is the Dead Sea. It only takes in. It never gives out. Some of the deadest people I know are those who've gone to church all their life, Sunday school all their life, read their Bible all their life, take in, 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 and never give out. They stagnate. They are dead. But the Bible says we ought to pursue the flowing of the Spirit. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit. What is the flowing of rivers of living water? That is the Holy Spirit in us and then speaking through us. Now, some that may be listening to this in the future were not here earlier uh, for our testimony time. You didn't hear the testimonies tonight. But people testified tonight in our church how the Holy Spirit flowed through them this week and gave them the very words to say to people who were lost to bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And any of you that have ever been soul winners have experienced this, and you know this is true, where God begins to speak through you, and all of a sudden he will bring verses to your memory that you haven't thought about in a decade. He'll bring illustrations to your mind. And, and, and when the thing is over, you will say sometimes in awe as the soul winner, wow, where did that come from? That's called the flowing of the Holy Spirit. And that's something we should pursue. And that's something that every one of us can have and can experience. 
But you got to have the first two first. You got to be filled with the Spirit. And then you have to have the fruit of the Spirit. Well, that, that would certainly aid in it. But you know, even that Samaritan woman in John 4, she went down to the men of Samaria and said, come, show me a, uh, come see a man that told me all things that ever I did is not this the Christ. And it says a whole bunch of men believed on him because of the saying of the woman. And that was the flowing of the Holy Spirit through her. And Jesus had said to her in his discourse as he was leading her to faith in him, he said, if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him and he would have given thee living water. Out of his belly shall flow living water. She got the living waters and she went and shared it with others. I want to encourage you to pursue these three things. The filling of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, and the flowing of the Spirit. In closing, turn to 1 Samuel chapter 10. 1 Samuel chapter number 10. This is not in the exact order that I gave them tonight, but I want you to notice these points in this one verse. 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. This is talking about Saul when he was still a good guy. It says, and the, and the Spirit of the Lord shall come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Now, that's not the order I gave them tonight. <coughs> but notice, number one, he got the filling of the Spirit. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. Number two, here's the flowing of the Spirit, and thou shalt prophesy with them. And here's the fruit of the Spirit, and thou shalt be turned into another man. Verse 9, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Wow. What a miracle. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him, and the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this? That is come unto the son of Kish is Saul also among the prophets. So notice he's filled with the Spirit. And notice the fruit of the Spirit. What is this that has come upon him? Is Saul one of the prophets? What a changed man. And then notice the flowing of the Spirit. It says he prophesied among them in verse 10. Now there's three pursuits you and I need to have. Regarding our communion with the Holy Ghost, to be filled with the Spirit, pursue the fruit of the Spirit, and pursue the flowing of the Spirit. And these things tonight are to help us to become like Christ, and then to help others come to Christ. That's what it's for. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight's lesson. We pray that every one of us would meet the Holy Spirit, that he wouldn't be some unknown stranger, but rather God, the third person of the Trinity who lives inside of our bodies, close to us. And Father, tonight, I pray that I and we would be filled with your Spirit, that the fruit of the Spirit would begin to manifest in us and change us. And Lord, if we're not changing Help us to humbly examine ourselves tonight. And then, oh, how we pray for the flowing of the Spirit where conversations are just taken over by the Holy Ghost and living water comes out of our belly because it's in our belly. It's in the innermost part of our being. It's what we want them to have to satisfy the thirst of their soul that satisfied us. Lord, help us with this truth tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing about the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, what do you say?
Um, tonight we want to just sing a song, and uh, I should have gotten the, the number down. 870, 870. And as we uh, sing tonight, it might be a, just a good time. Maybe uh, it's been a while since you asked God to fill you with your spirit, his spirit. Don't, don't, don't rest on past experiences. Again, Samson, Samson, Samson was filled with the spirit four times. But when he wasn't, it says, walk in the spirit. And you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When he wasn't filled, that's when he went down. And all the experiences we may have had in the past, being filled with the Spirit, no, we need the Spirit's filling today. Let's stand together and sing page 870. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And as we sing, won't you come and pray tonight? The Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. He came in mighty fullness then. His witness through believers won the lost. And multitudes were born again. The early Christians scattered o'er the world. They preached the gospel fearlessly. Though some were martyred and the lions hurled, they marched along in victory. Come, Holy Spirit, dark is the hour. We need your filling, your love and your mighty power. Revive the church today. Then in an age when darkness gripped the earth, the just shall live by faith was learned. The Holy Spirit gave the church new birth as reformation fires burn. In latter years the great revivals came When saints would seek the Lord and pray Oh, once again we need that holy flame To meet the challenge of today Come, Holy Spirit Dark is the hour your filling, your love, and your mighty power. Move now among us, stir us, we pray. Come, Holy Spirit, revive the church today. Let's pray. Father, thank you for church tonight. And all across our country, people are having evening services on Sunday. We pray there would be a stirring. God, we need your Holy Spirit. We just seem to be so full of the flesh today and full of self and full of sin. And uh, it's left us miserable and empty and powerless. In a day when there's more people around us than ever, God help us. Lord, we ask you tonight to forgive us of our sins, to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. We ask that we would follow you in your example, uh, where you're obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Oh, how self dies screaming. And we struggle every day with our flesh, but Lord, it's no good. May we die to self. Please, Lord Jesus, help us. We pray for the filling of the Spirit. <clears throat> we pray that Christ would be formed in us in the fruit of the Spirit. 
Change us, Lord. Help us not to be satisfied, staying the same. For your power is almighty. And we pray for this flowing of the Spirit out of our belly, that living water of Jesus Christ and the gospel would flow out. And we would hear so many more testimonies like we heard tonight of your word just flowing out of us in so many situations, even at the hairdressers, so somebody could be saved. Oh, God, help us. Give us your Holy Spirit, we pray. Teach us to have communion with him. We ask and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, if you got any questions.